I command that someone will bring me the three hairs of Gadar the ghoul, said the king, sitting on his throne. So who was Gadar the ghoul? Oh, Gadar the ghoul was the biggest, scariest, most monstrous of all the ghouls in the land. He had three hairs that grew from the top of his head, just three. But everybody knew that his strength came from those three hairs. Who will bring me the three hairs of Gadar the ghoul, said the king. Anyone who can do that, I will allow them to marry my daughter. But nobody was brave enough or stupid enough to try. Gadar the ghoul could come down and steal sheep, and steal goats, or smash up houses. Gadar the ghoul would come down and steal people's flocks so they had nothing left to milk to make cheese. Or he would come down and he'd crash down their olive trees. Or he'd come and he'd smash up the careful little rivulets people had brought from the river to water their gardens. No one could beat him. Still, one person tried. His name was Ahmed. He was only a young boy. He was not big and he was not strong. But he was clever, which is one thing. And he was honest and brave, which is another two. So he set out with a sword and a pair of scissors and a length of rope and climbed the mountain to see if he could find the lair of Gedar the ghoul. He climbed out of the farmland up onto the side of the mountain where it gets too steep for farmers to grow their crops and uh, too rocky and dry for the uh, sheep and the goats to find anything to eat. So he's left to itself. A little way up the mountain he heard some moaning and groaning so he hid behind a rock and peeped out. And what did he see? He saw a smallish ghoul moaning and groaning because his hair was caught in the branches of a tree. Oh, I can't get out. I can't get out. Ahmed got out his sword and with a whoop, whoop, cut the branch free. And the ghoul got there and said, Oh, thank you. Thank you for freeing me. Thank you for freeing me. But what is a small human boy doing all by himself on the mountain? Well, said Ahmed, I'm coming to get the three hairs of Gadar the ghoul uh, because I need to take them back to the king because otherwise the king won't let me marry his daughter. <laughs> said the ghoul. Well, you won't manage that. Gadar the ghoul will squish you into soup. He was too strong for me even when he kidnapped my sister. And the ghoul was quiet for a little bit as he thought about his sister and how sad he was that she'd been kidnapped. Listen, he said. Take this. And he plucked a, an apple from the tree and he gave it to Ahmad. He said, take this. If you meet my sister, show her this to know that I'm still thinking of her. And listen, if you can, find out why is it my apple tree is dying. Thank you, said Ahmad. And off he set off up the mountain. He came to a stream bed. And I would expect on the mountain the stream would be rushing and bubbling and gurgling. But it was. It was barely trickling. Hardly filling the bed even. And he followed up. As he heard it, he heard some moaning and some squealing. And he listened to it. He said, what wrong was that? So he peeped her out behind a bush. And what did he see? He, he saw a medium-sized ghoul. And the medium-sized ghoul was stuck up to his middle in the mud, couldn't get out. God, I can't get out of here, I can't get out, this is my oh my God, this is, oh, come on. So he thought once, and he thought twice, quickly, he whirled his rope around his head, chucked it, whoosh, and the, the, the ghoul caught it, and, uh, and Ahmed pulled, and the ghoul pulled, and they pulled, and out he came. Oh, thanks for freeing me, says the medium-sized ghoul, but what's, What's a little human boy like you doing alone on the mountain? Well, says Ahmed, I've come to get the three hairs of Gadar the ghoul, because if I can get the three hairs of Gadar the ghoul and give them to the king, he'll let me marry his daughter. <laughs> says the medium-sized ghoul, a little squish like you. Why, Gadar the ghoul would grind you into grits. 
he was too strong for me even when he kidnapped my sister and the ghoul was quiet for a bit as he thought how sad he was about his sister listen he says take this he takes a ring off his finger and gave it to Armo take this ring and if you do meet my sister would you show it to her to let her know I'm still thinking of her and another thing could you try and find out why it is there's no water left in my stream and it's gone down to mud Yes, says Ahmed, and away he goes up the mountain, following the track of that stream. He follows it up and up, until he hears some moaning and some groaning. So he peeps from behind a tussock of grass. What does he see? There's a great big ghoul, and the great big ghoul has got his twisty, gnarly, uppy fingernails caught in a net, and he can't get rid of it. Ah, oh, I can't get rid of it. Ah, net. Ah, oh, net. I can't get rid of it. Ah, net. So... Ahmed grabs his scissors, stick, 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 cuts the net away. Ghoul's free. Oh, thanks for getting me free, says the ghoul. But what's a little human boy like you doing all by himself on the mountain? Well, says Ahmed, I've come to get the three hairs from the top of Gadar the ghoul's head. If I get the three hairs and I take them back to the king, the king's going to let me marry his daughter. Oh, says the ghoul. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, no. He'll get you. He'll turn you into. He'll turn you into a casserole. He'll turn you into a pizza. He'll make you into little canapes. He was too strong for me, even when he kidnapped my sister. And the ghoul was quiet for a little bit while he thought how sad he was about his sister. <laughs> Listen, he says. Here, take this fish. And he hands on that a great big fish. He says, "Take this fish." If you meet my sister, would you show it to her to, so she knows I'm still thinking of her? And another thing, would you ask, does she know why there's no fish left in my pond? Well, says Ahmed, I'll try, and off he goes up the mountain. Now he gets right up to the very top of the mountain where it stops being steep, start being curvy down at the top. He peeps around. There's a great big house built out of tumbled together rocks and he creeps up to that and peeps through the window to see if Gadar the ghoul is in there. He's not. There's a lady ghoul, a ghoula. And she's sitting there and she, she's stirring great big pot. But he looks in her eyes and she looks kind of friendly. Also, she looks a little bit like those other three ghouls. So he gets all his bravery in one place and he goes in and he stands and he lays out the apple and the ring and the fish, and she looks up and she sees him and says, Oh, I see you've met my brothers. What's a young human boy like you doing on the mountain all by yourself? Well, he says, I've come to get the three hairs from the top of Gadar the ghoul's head, and if I get those three hairs and I take them back down to see the king, the king's going to let me marry his daughter. Oh, says the, uh, says the ghoul, well, I don't think you'll stand much chance. But it's brave to have got this far. What did my brothers have to say? Oh, they all wanted to say that they're thinking of you and, 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 and they're, they're worried for you. And also, they wanted to know, first one, the little one, wants to know why is his tree dying? And the second one wants to know why is there's no water in his stream? And the third one wants to know uh, why is there no fish in his pond? Shh, says the cooler. I can hear him coming. Get in the shadows at the back. So they go to the very, very back of the house where it's all shadowy and dark and hide him under, under, a, under a sack. And then she goes back to the fire and stirs the pot and in comes the biggest, ugliest ghoul you ever saw. He's got a face like a sack of potatoes. He's got ears like mouldy cauliflowers. He's got a nose like a twisted old parsnip. His teeth is filled up with holes and they're brown and different colours. And he says... Why can I smell humans in here? Because human, darling, says the ghoul. Hey, humans, there's no humans in here. Maybe you trot in one on the way up. Maybe, he says. He sits down. He says, you sit there, love. I'll bring you some food. And she brings him like 20 sheep and maybe a couple of goats for the taste and a big bowl of casserole. And he sits there eating. No. <coughs> When he's finished, he says, I've got to go to sleep now. She goes, oh, darling, come and sit by me. And he sits down and then he lies down and he puts his giant head in her lap. And she strokes his head. 
says, darling, before we go to sleep, just one question. Just one question, darling, before we go to sleep. Uh, uh, why, my little brother, why, why is his uh, apple tree dying? And as she says that, she pulls out one of the hairs from his head. Oh, he says, um, little brother, tree, yeah, that's stupid. He doesn't even know that there's rats eating the, the roots of this tree. He doesn't even know. She carries on stroking his head, stroking his head, stroking his head. So, oh, darling, don't go to sleep just yet. Just one little question, just one more little question. Um, before we go to sleep, darling, my middle brother, the middle-sized one, can you tell me, why is there no water left in his stream? And as she says that, she pulls out the second hair so gently he doesn't even notice. Oh, he says, stupid, stupid ghoul. He doesn't even know that there's frogs and alligators and turtles drinking the water from his stream and that's why there's none left. Oh, she says, mm, so get on by the sleep now. Oh, darling, just, just one more question. Just one more question, she says. My, my biggest brother, my biggest brother, why is there no fish left in his lake? Oh, so get on your stupid brother. He doesn't even know there's a great big water snake in there eating them all. That's why there's none left. <coughs> Last hair. Gadot the ghoul goes to sleep. <coughs> Quick as a flash, Armad's out from under his sack. He's out of the shadows. Thank you very much, he says. I'll see if I can help out. He grabs the three hairs and starts running down the mountain, past the first brother. He says, Oi, big one. Water snake, look for the water snake, it's eating your fish. Thanks, says the brother. Here, have this. And he gives him a bag full of gold. Carrying the bag of gold, running down, running down. Second brother, oi, second brother, medium brother. You, you're in your stream, there's there's frogs and alligators and turtles drinking the water. That's why the water's gone. You need to get rid of the turtles and the alligators and the frogs. Thanks, he says. Here, take this bag of jewels. Bag of jewels, bag of gold, bag of jewels, bag of jewels, bag of jewels. Bag of jewels. <gasps> down the hill, third brother. Hey, little brother, he says, your tree, look down, there's rats eating the roots, you need to dig out the rat holes. Thanks, he says, here, have this magic apple. If you rub it, I will come to your help, wheresoever you may be. Thanks, he says, bag of gold, bag of jewels, magic apple, bag of gold, bag of jewels, magic apple, till he gets back to the city. There he spends the gold and the jewels on a beautiful house, with fine clothes and a haircut and a beard trim, and he presents himself at the palace. I have the three hairs, Gadar the ghoul. I claim the hand of your daughter. Well, a king can't go back on his word. So within the week, Almed is married to the daughter. Unfortunately, she's brave and kind and honest, and they get on very, very well. Just a couple of weeks later, there is a terrible crashing and a terrible banging. And they look out, peering over the city walls. There's Gadar the ghoul, no hair on the top of his head, and very, very angry. He's thumping at the wall with his fists and crashing at the wall with a great big club, saying, give me my three hairs back or I will smash your city to pieces. Oh man, it stands on the city wall produces one of the hairs. He says, you stop crashing and banging. And he sets fire. <laughs> Hair is gone. Arr, says God of the ghoul. Give me my two hairs back or I'll smash you to smithereens. You stop talking like that, says Ahmed. God of the ghoul is now crouched on the floor. Oh, he says, oh no, oh no, give me the one hair back and I will go away and I promise I will never bother you again. But Ahmed, look in his eyes. They look sly. He doesn't believe him. He says, you go away from here, Gadar the ghoul. You go away and you never come back. And if I ever hear of you hurting anybody ever again, I'm going to burn this hair too. So Gadar the ghoul did go away, and he never came back. And some people even say that he became a vegetarian, but I don't know about the truth of that. Quick, crack, the story's done.